Hypothetically, and purely hypothetically, I want you to imagine something. Picture Escape from Tarkov, but instead of playing against cheaters in 60% of raids, dealing with awful, unusable weapons and terrible stamina mechanics, I get across the road. I get hit, stamina's gone. You instead had faster load times, better looking graphics, and even player controlled airstrikes? While this doesn't exist and isn't available by googling SP Tarkov, that's illegal. Extremely illegal. I want to discuss what it would be like if it did. All of the gameplay of these hypothetical mods is created in After Effects. So even if BSG wanted to abuse YouTube's copyright system to take down a completely legitimate review of a modification of their subpar project, I haven't used their game. So leave me alone, you Russian fu- The following is a story that takes place in an alternate universe where BSG allows mods and doesn't brainlessly attack their community for making their product better. Hey guys, successful YouTuber Margarine Grindstone here. Let's start with the most comprehensive mod I've used so far. SBT Realism improves almost all of the base mechanics to make the experience of playing the game a whole lot better. Recoil on base guns is usable now, and attachments have been completely overhauled. Magazines affect reload speed, and jams are now fixed in one annoying complicated hotkey instead of two. Once you remap it, it's downright reasonable. In addition to that, now when you have a face shield or NVGs blocking your sightline, you can angle your weapon, and boy oh boy are the vibes immaculate. With this mod installed, headsets even function as ear protection. Louder weapons deafen you and headsets protect you. But I know what you're thinking, because it's the same thing that kept me away until now. So what, I'm just gonna run around shooting scavs? Maybe the occasional raider? Negatory, good buddy. Not only does SPT have PMCs, this overhaul tiers your gear and allows you to scale them with you however you want. They also bring appropriate gear based on tier and map. A tier 4 bear might bring quad nods at night, but he obviously won't during the day. These enemies don't feel like players per se, but they carry loot, fight scavs, and each other, and they use a ton of voice lines, which gives them a lot of personality. <laughs> Their behavior is a lot more aggressive than scavs, and they aim better. Trust me, they will still kill you. When I hear a voice line in English, my hair stand up. Oh, and they fixed the gunsmith quests. While we're changing baseline features, let's mess with the economy. This mod, Softcore, changes the progression and completely reworks the flea market. It's focused on barters now, and mixing that with the removal of founded raid means instead of just searching for a gas analyzer, you could trade, let's say, two coffees for it instead. The focus isn't on price per slot anymore. The thing you need might be something you've never needed before. This fixes the old problem of buying everything off the flea market like when it was first added, but it doesn't push hard into tedium like the current system does. On the topic of tedium, why the hell does the hideout function like a mobile game? No longer do you have to wait three hours for hideout construction. 100x crafting, 100x building, 10x moonshine. This isn't my full-time job, this is a video game, damn it. Remember the recent controversy surrounding Reshade? TLDR, the lighting in this game sucks, the community fixed it, and BSG banned the tool that allowed it. Not here though, this isn't Reshade, but man does it look good. Interchange is just about playable now. Speaking of maps, let's talk about an open world Tarkov. I know, what? Let's put a movie clip in there and not use that. That was a that was a weird take. When you extract somewhere, let's say gate three on factory, now you can head back into factory the way you came on the next raid, or you can pop out the underground bunkers on customs or woods. All the boat extracts connect, all the car extracts connect. This mod also allows for a rework of the stash system. It's disabled by default, but if you want a truly immersive experience, you can enable secondary stashes, meaning your main stash is in the factory tunnels, and between other extracts, you have a bit of space to stash some stuff. Another option for this mod is to place the traders in certain spots on the map, meaning yet again, these modders have implemented a planned feature years before the actual game ever will. To give yourself a little boost for this game mode, I recommend installing some modded traders which are supported by the mod. This allows for a little redundancy in what you can buy, so you're slightly less screwed when you need something. If you're desperate though, fence is always available. Hope that 60,000 ruble AK is worth it. This place style can lead to really risk averse play though, so if it's too much for you, I recommend turning off multi-stash. Just imagine fence is moving your stash around or something. Keep in mind, to buy something from a multi-stash, you need to physically move the rubles yourself. A wallet might not be the worst investment. Most of this is pretty in-depth, but it's not all that custom. You might be thinking, so they can tweak values, but it's not like they can add new content. On the contrary, my friend. With the fire support mod, if you have a rangefinder equipped, you can call in two A-10 gun runs on a helicopter extract once per raid. Observant, this is station. 
Houston, it's on its way, get ready. Streets inbound, going hot, get clear. Here we go. Is it balanced? Fuck no. Is it incredible to see? Does it show the capabilities of these modders? Oh yeah. If I haven't convinced you to hypothetically take a look at this project, I don't know how I could. And for the record, this mod requires owning Escape from Tarkov, and no one involved endorses or supports piracy. I hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching, and as always, subscribe to my fucking YouTube channel.